So I've split chapter nine into two bits. I've done nine A, which is just the skills, and then nine B, which is the applications. There's nothing really new here in terms of functions to differentiate, but there are gonna be some different ways that we apply these things. So we're gonna be looking at parametric equations, implicit differentiation, and then something called rates of change, which we will come across later. So we're going to start off with parametric differentiation. And luckily, parametric differentiation is really, really straightforward. So I've written in the orange box that if x and y are given as functions of a parameter, t, then dy dx is just dy dt divided by dx dt, which sometimes we write as dy dt divided by dx dt. Well, the proof for this is actually really simple. If we're saying that dy dx is dy by dt, divided by dx by dt. Well, we know how to divide fractions. We would keep the dy by dt this way around. We would flip the dx dt and multiply them. And effectively, even though they're not fractions, the dt bits cancel, and it's actually just the same as dy by dx. So you're gonna to need to memorize this little bit that we've got here. You do the y derivative divided by the x derivative. OK, let's go straight in with a question now. Find the gradient at the point P where T equals 2 on the curve given parametrically by X equals T cubed plus T and Y equals T squared plus 1. And the domain of that parameter is that T is a real number. Now, I like to write out X and Y again because I think it helps me to organise my page. So I'm going to differentiate X with respect to T and I get 3T squared plus 1. I'm then going to differentiate y with respect to t, and I just get 2t. So this means that dy by dx is going to be dy by dt divided by dx by dt. And the thing that I'm interested in with this is that here, dy by dx is neither in terms of x nor y. Instead, it is in terms of the parameter. And the parameter, if you can't remember, is that background thing. In this case, it's t. So you'll always need to know what the value of t is to do any calculations for this kind of question. So we know that t is 2. So when t equals 2, dy by dx is 2 times 2 divided by 3 times 2 squared plus 1 and that's 4 over 13. Obviously, they could go on to ask you questions about normals and tangents, so you'll still need to be prepared from the stuff from year one for that as well. OK, the next one is actually going to be about finding normals and tangents, and it wants you to find the normal where theta is pi over 6 to these parametric equations that we've got here. So again, I'm going to start off by writing out my x and y parametric equations and then I'm going to differentiate them to get dx dt oh not dt because it's theta this time I'm differentiating with respect to theta 3 sine theta goes to 3 cos theta and dy d theta is going to go to minus 5 sine theta which means that dy by dx is minus 5 sine theta that's dy by d theta divided by 3 cos theta and this can simplify. So the number bit is going to be minus 5 over 3, and sine over cos is tan theta, like this. And we're trying to find out the normal. Well, to do the normal, we're going to eventually need to have the straight line equation. We're going to be doing y minus y1 equals m brackets x minus x1. So there's three things that I need here. I need x1, y1, and I need m. Well, let's find out what x1 is, first of all. So when theta is equal to pi over 6, x is going to be equal to 3 sine pi over 6. Now you should know that sine of pi over 6 or sine of 30 is a half. So it's just going to be 3 over 2. And y is 5 cos pi over 6. And cos of pi over 6 is going to be root 3 over 2. So y is going to be 5 root 3 over 2. And the value of dy by dx is going to be minus 5 over 3 tan of pi over 6. 
and I'm hoping you have memorized that tan of pi over 6 is 1 over root 3. Now, I'm happy to leave it like this, because in a second, I am going to be finding the gradient of the perpendicular of the normal, which means I'm going to be taking this thing and I'm going to be doing the negative reciprocal. So that's why I didn't even bother doing um, that on my calculator or trying to rationalize the denominator, because I'm now going to be doing the gradient of the perpendicular. And just as a reminder, that little sign down there means perpendicular. So I'm going to take the negative reciprocal of that and I get 3 root 3 over 5. So I'm going to take this bit and I'm now going to sub in my values. So I get y minus 5 root 3 over 2 equals 3 root 3 over 5 x minus 3 over 2. Now it just wanted the equation of the normal so technically I could stop there but I'm probably going to continue just to make it look a little bit neater and I'm going to do that by multiplying everything by 10. If I multiply everything by 10, I get 10y minus 25 root 3, because of the 2, equals 6 root 3, x minus 3 over 2. And so I'm going to just quickly come and do it over here. I get 10y minus 25 root 3 equals 6 root 3x and 6 root 3 times 3 over 2 is just going to be 9 root 3. So when we just finish this off I'm going to say we've got 10y minus 6 root 3x and then I'm going to do minus 25 plus 9 my brain isn't working today minus 16 root 3 equals 0 if they wanted it in that form that they've got there.